Chrissy, while we line up some phone calls, mm-hmm. I thought we might tell the listeners a story. Sure. Okay. You and I were staying in a hotel last week. And at the end of our very long day, we were in bed, channel surfing, and run across a one-hour infomercial. And it was about title lock, theft of title. People worried that they wake up one day and they don't own their home anymore, that the title of their home had been stolen. We watched this uh, infomercial, and we're in the business, okay? We know that uh, a lot of half-truths, and you add up those half-truths, and I could see why people would get very scared and worried listening to this thinking, thinking, this is the worst thing ever. I've got to buy this title theft insurance. And we've been telling people for months and months now because we get so many calls from it. This is something, as a general rule, you do not need to worry about. With your own home. With the home that you live in. So there's one limited circumstance that they are people are trying to steal titles to. This limited circumstance is for urban, buildable, vacant lots. Listen to me, folks. Vacant lots, okay? Doesn't have a house on it. We're not talking about five-acre farm somewhere. We're talking about urban, buildable, vacant lots, okay? A lot that's 100 feet wide by 100 feet deep that you own. You think you're going to build a house on it someday. That is what's getting stolen. Correct. And we've had some clients like that. And so you've had a client this week, and I was so proud of you that you helped to resolve her issue. So I thought we would tell the listeners about that story today because I learned a lot about how it's being done. And we think maybe the listeners would be interested in it as well. Absolutely. So let's give these the parties some names here. We're going to start with our client. We're going to call her Miss White. Okay. And Miss White is just a sweet elderly lady. How old did you tell me she is? She's in her early 90s. Couldn't be more sweet. Mm -hmm. We want to do the best we can for her. She's very concerned and upset. Thought that she owned a vacant lot. Everything is good. Wakes up one day, finds out that somebody has stolen the title to her vacant lot. Correct. Okay. Now, another party in this would be, we're going to call them buyer one. Buyer one was the thief. Buyer one was the one that prepared a fraudulent deed into the name of buyer one. He's the crook here. Then buyer one turns around and sells it to buyer two. Buyer two is an innocent party. Buyer two thought he was getting exactly what he thought he was getting, and that is good title to this buildable, urban, vacant lot. And then we have a title company that when buyer two bought it, buyer two got title insurance to insure to him that he had good title as a piece of property. Exactly. And then we have one more party called, we're going to call her Nancy Notary. Okay. So when this comes to light for our client, Miss White, that one day she wakes up and finds that somebody else owns her vacant lot, she comes to Olson Law Group and says, I need help. I, this is my lot. Somebody says, else says they own it now. And we took on her case. And so what did we do? We called buyer one. Uh, excuse me. We, we couldn't find buyer one. He's Correct. long gone. Correct. We called buyer two. Buyer two went and got an attorney. And we said, right. buyer two, you need to give this lot back to us because that's a fraudulent deed. Buyer two says, hey, you know, I'm an instant party here. Why would I want to just give this lot back? I paid good money for it. What's in it for me? Correct. Buyer two went to their title insurance company, and title insurance company said, hey, you know, who says it's fraud? You, you, attorney Merrill, says it's fraud. How do we know it's fraud? Why do we want to cut a check for something when we don't know it's fraud? You know, nobody's moving on this until attorney Chris Merrill gets involved. <laughs> and so... I want to tell the listeners what you did last week, which I'm so proud of. Thank okay? you. All right. Thank you. Love. So Thank number you. one, the deed into buyer one, our crook, it's public record. Anybody mm-hmm. can look at it. Mm-hmm. We pull it up. We can pull up a copy of it. We can see our Miss White forged signature. We, we know that's not her signature. Uh, but you take a look at the notary on there because remember, folks, that when you do a deed, it must be witnessed and notarized. So in theory, you got some people that have to be in on this crooked scheme, exactly. stealing of a title, right? Here in Florida, <clears throat> real estate title deeds must have two witnesses and a notary. Exactly. Now let's start. Let's back up for a minute. If we went to court for Mrs. White. And Mrs. White raises her hand and swears that, hey, that's not my signature. Does Mrs. White win her case? Not automatically. Not automatically. Mm -hmm. Takes more than her word Mm -hmm. to say so. So what we really need is we need the notary 
to step up and say, yeah, that was Mrs. White. She signed that deed. I was there when I notarized her deed, okay? And, uh, and again, we can't fire buyer, buyer one, the crook, okay? Otherwise, we'd be taking his deposition. Mm -hmm. So you look it up, and you there is a public record of the notaries in Florida. We're calling her Nancy Notary. Right. And Step sure one, enough, may I just stop you, because yeah. that's perfect. You're doing perfect. I just want to let the listeners know, though, that on the face – a deed can look perfect. Yeah. So that's a meaning there are two witnesses, a notary with the notary stamp and the commission, the expiration. So on its face, when you look at it, it all looks perfect. We've got the listeners up to speed here. We're going to take a break. We'll get back to this story of title theft when we get back. My name is Tom Olson. The name of the show is Olson on Law. You're listening to News Radio WFLA. We are in the process of telling our listeners about a case that we're handling for people. And it started, well, we've been, so many people in the last few months have been calling us and asking us, do we need to buy this title theft insurance? Is it really possible that I'm going to wake up one day and I don't own my home anymore? Somebody has forged a title and stolen my home out from under me. I never even knew what happened. We tell people, no, you don't need it. There is only one limited circumstance where people are stealing titles, and it is for vacant residential building lots, okay? If you got a house or a structure on it, don't worry. If you got five or ten acres, don't worry. We're talking vacant residential building lots, single-family home building lots. That is what's being stolen. So we've already had a couple of cases, but you did some brilliant detective work last week that is going to help our client with her case. We're going to call her Miss White, just a sweet elderly lady, just mm -hmm. a client. You just can't help but love her, and she's completely innocent in this matter. She wakes up one day. She thinks she owns a vacant residential building lot here in Orlando. Somebody's stolen a title out from her, under her. Then we have buyer one. Buyer one, he's a crook. He put this crooked deal together. He stole the property. And as what happens when buyer one steals the, the vacant land, the title, he immediately turns it around and sells it to an innocent third party. We're going to call him buyer two. And when we've talked about this before, and then there's a title insurance company that might or might not have to come in and pay the loss to somebody. And then in this case, we also have a notary public. We're going to call him Nancy Notary. And when we've talked about this before, I said, okay, there. It, it, Number one, a deed requires a witness and a notary. You've got buyer one, probably forged our client's name. I say you've got to have a crooked notary in on a deal too, and that's how the way I assumed it would go down. But in this situation, we're going to take it a step further. We, when we learn a little bit more about how this process works, and we want to bring our listeners up to speed on it. Okay, So you, again, the, the deed itself, you can get it in the public records. Anybody can. So we print that's it up. That's important. We're looking at uh -huh. it. It, you know, it's got our Miss White signature on it, but it's not her signature. It's got two witnesses. It's got a notary. You know, everything about it looks very official on its face. Exactly. And so you brilliantly take a look at the notary and Nancy Notary, and there's a, in Florida, you can go, there's a source who you can find all the notaries in Florida, and you find Nancy Notary, you find her. You locate right. her. You get a address and a phone number for Nancy Notary. Only an address. Only an address mm -hmm. for Nancy Notary. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you want to contact Nancy Notary and say, look, you notarized this deed. It says Mrs. White, our client, signed this deed. You know, Tell us what happened. So you managed to reach Nancy Notary. And tell us more about that. Absolutely. So, yes, I the database for the public's protection Anybody has the ability to look up a notary and confirm that they are a legal notary, active notary in Florida. When you do that, it gives some information about them, including what their license number is and including the address of where they have registered their notary. From that is where I did searching to determine what that was. It happened to be a business. And then I called that business to see if I could speak to Nancy Notary and hoping that I would get a hold of her because I didn't know. I was able to get a hold of Nancy Notary, identify who I was and why I was calling and proceed to ask her if she was aware 
that she notarized this deed back in October of last year for our client, Miss White, and in that conversation determined that Nancy Notary did not notarize that deed. Nancy Notary was not a part of that at all. And someone, not only did they forge signatures, including they forged Nancy Notary's signature, but they also forged a notary stamp. Okay. So if you know, as a notary, we have a an ink stamp. Mm -hmm. And when you ink stamp, it's got the name of the notary. It's got the notary license number on it. And anybody could go take a look at any deed in the state of Florida. It's going to have a notary on it. Correct. And you could get that notary information, notary's name, license number, everything you need to know, and then get on the internet and order a new notary ink stamp that's got Nancy Notary's name on it. Correct. And that's exactly what happened here. Also, too, I think it's important for listeners to know that when a deed is recorded, the people at the recording offices in any county in Florida, it is not their job if the deed looks accurate on its face, they are not going to take it to the next level. So I think that's important to know because some people may say, well, how did that even get recorded? Exactly. Recording clerks are not looking for that kind of thing. They're not going to be looking for that. And so, well, first of all, I want to back up a little bit. When you call Nancy Notary and you say, hey, I'm attorney Chris Merrill calling from attorney Tom Olson's office, what did she say? Oh, well, the, that's the most important part <laughs> is that Nancy Notary may, you know, again, I identified who I was. However, it's not Nancy Notary's obligation to speak to me. And and when I said that I was with attorney Tom Olson's office and Olson on law radio show, her words were, oh my gosh, I know attorney Tom Olson. I know of Olson on law radio show. And if you're associated with him, I will speak to you. Yay. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you, Nancy yeah, thank Notary. You. Yeah, was, thank you. But again, it's because <clears throat> immediately she recognized, well, attorney Tom Olson, very reputable. I know him in the community. and We're we, one of the good guys. Exactly. So Nancy Notary says, you see my name there. You see a signature that says Nancy Notary. You see a notary seal that says Nancy Notary. However, that was not me. And she goes further and says... That the police came. Somebody had stolen her notary ID, you might say. Correct. And the police came. So she had nothing to do with even knowing how they got a stamp other than what you just described to listeners that somehow they got her information and did a brand new stamp had that brand new stamp sent to them, wherever they are, and then proceeded to be Nancy Notary, forged Nancy Notary's name, forged her stamp and all of her notary information, and forged the signatures on the deed, including our client, uh, Mrs. White. And so Nancy Notary knew that this was going on around town. I mean, we this happened to our client, Miss White. Correct. But there's some other deeds that were her her name and notary were forged. Correct. And she filed, she had fi already filed a police report to the whole thing. Correct. Yep. Exactly. And so we asked Nancy Notary, would she file, sign an affidavit mm -hmm. attesting to these facts and attaching a copy of the police report? And she said she's going to work with us to get that done. Absolutely. Yes. Now, what does that mean when we, when we now know, first of all, without this, we would have to go to court, mm -hmm. burden of proof on mm -hmm. us that this was a forged deed. Miss mm -hmm. White's testimony alone saying, that's not my signature. That's not necessarily good enough to win a case. Correct. But when we now have this affidavit from Nancy Notary, boom, we win. Exactly. We win. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, why do we win? Mm -hmm. Because remember, we have buyer one who's a crook. We can't find him. He's long gone. We have buyer two who's an innocent third party who paid good money for this vacant residential building lot who's not going to just turn it back over to us and say, oh, you know, I'll take a loss here. I'm glad to give you this lot back and I'll take a finance. They're not going to do that. So, but the point about it is, is that when a deed is fraudulent on its face, mm -hmm. all innocent third party buyers down the line, they lose. Exactly. They, they can be an innocent buyer. Doesn't matter. Fraudulent deed backs everything up 
and puts the property back into Miss White's name. Correct. Okay. Correct. And that was key that it's what you just said, Tom, which is a fraudulent deed because if not, now it goes to the he said, she said, and, and you know, it may or may not get back to Mrs. White. But yeah. in this situation, again, remember, too, that when you look at the deed, the deed looks, everything looks valid and legal. Step two, if you were to just go look at the notary, it appears the notary is legal. Yeah. I, you, there so is you, a really a notary out there named Nancy, Nancy Notary. Correct. So if you did that and just took the second step, you would think, oh, well, okay, it's legit. But I said, wait, there's something more to this. Because just because this Nancy Notary comes up in Florida and everything matched the, you know, the license, the expiration, all of that information... I said, there's got to be more to this. I'm just not taking it as that Nancy notary is legit and now that's it. And now, again, if you were going to take the next step to defend Mrs. White, you would have to now, like you said, Tom, go to court. And now you're talking about a lot more money for litigation to just try to yeah. defend her position. So I want to recap this story and, and tell the listeners what we've learned about this uh, for their own information and our, our own education, and we'll do that after the break. Hey, folks, my name is Tom Olson. The name of the show Just is Olson on Law. You're listening to News Radio WFLA. So, Chrissy, we're going to recap here and start by saying again that we were in a hotel last week, and we were just channel surfing and saw a one-hour infomercial on a company trying to sell you title theft insurance and with a well-known former politician and we're in the business okay we know what's true and what's not true and what do they say the best lie contains half truths man there was a bunch of half truths in there okay <laughs> i can see why in a layman looking at that infomercial would say i gotta have it i must have it it's essential but it's not where do you need to be concerned about having your th your title stolen out from under you? It is one limited circumstance, and that is if you own a vacant residential building lot. That's it. That's the only time you should be concerned, okay? So we had a client, Miss White, right here in Orlando, and her vacant residential building lot was stolen out from under her. One day she wakes up and sees that the title's not uh, in her name anymore. It was stolen by who we're calling Buyer 1. It Buyer 1 sold it to an innocent third party, Buyer 2, who paid good money. Do we know what he paid for that lot offhand? 180000 That's a lot, okay? Mm -hmm. So he's out. he's got 180000 in this deal. And he got title insurance. Mm -hmm. And so when we discovered this problem, we went to buyer two and said, hey, this is a fraudulent deed. We need you to give this deed back. And buyer two says, wait a minute now, wait a minute. I'm not going to just give you this property back. I'm left holding the bag. Correct. So buyer two goes to his title insurance company and says, hey, uh, this is a fraudulent deed. We need you to fork up 180000 bucks." Title insurance company says, wait a minute now. We're not just going to write a check for $180,000 without some kind of proof. So now... Here, more poor Mrs. White, you know, she's really the one that's going to have to pursue this, including attorney's fees and court costs. Correct. Right? And then, so you you brilliantly looked at the deed, and what we did, what you found was to locate the notary on that deed. Her name was Nancy Notary. You look at the deed. It's got her signature. It's got her notary stamp. You contacted Nancy Notary. Nancy Notary says, yeah, I know this has been happening. It's been popping up. I did not sign or notarize that deed. Somebody has stolen my ID as a notary, got a fake notary ink stamp, put it on there. I will sign an affidavit and include a copy of my police report where I reported this theft that's going on. And what that makes, us an, makes Mrs. White, our client, an automatic winner. Because if it's a fraudulent deed, every exactly. deed that comes after that, I don't care if they're innocent parties, they lose. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. So now we can go to the buyer two and say, here's evidence it was a fraudulent deed. We can go to the title insurance company. Here's evidence of fraudulent deed. Title insurance company, pay buyer two the 180000 bucks. Correct. Buyer two, give this deed back to Miss White. And you know, who ends up holding the bag is a title insurance company, but that's what title insurance is for. Right, because that would be why somebody has title insurance, and it's the insurance com the title insurance company's responsibility, which is why let's follow this up, and that is this: as we have a title company here as well, that 
in addition to the law firm that now are the title company, they are requiring the underwriters of are now requiring more information and more criteria when there is a closing on a residential buildable vacant lot. So now that we know what's being stolen out there, it limited to residential vacant building lots, title insurance companies, when they are writing title insurance on a vacant residential building lot, exactly. they are doing their due diligence Correct. to make sure that this is real. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yes, this was before that happened. So, you know, good news for Miss White. Now, what does that mean? Okay. It means as a consumer out there, you, you there is only one thing you need to be worried about. And that is only if you have a vacant residential building lot, would you want to get title theft insurance for that? Might be a good investment. Oh yes. But if you buy that title insurance, you make sure that if your title gets stolen and you have to hire a lawyer, right. that that title insurance, that insurance company will pay your attorney's fees and court costs. Not just the value of the lot, okay? You need Correct. to be reimbursed your attorney's fees and court costs to get it back. Exactly. Because this area, this area of the law, when somebody is in this situation, meaning the, the Mrs. White, they will not, they have to fork out the attorney's fees and cost. And there, you know, you often people will say, oh, well, I'm automatically going to get my attorney's fees back. That is not correct. Yeah. So in this area of law, again, there's different areas where it's it written into the law that you would get your attorney's fees back. This is not one of them. Okay. So let's let's handle a text question we got here, Chrissy, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they they want to know, and it says this: when they look at this one-hour infomercial, mm -hmm. they have on there, I guess, a reformed crook. Mm -hmm. He's gone straight now, mm -hmm. but while he was a crook, he stole 100 titles to people's properties. Mm -hmm. Okay, now this infomercial is absolutely right in the sense that it mm -hmm. says, "I can, I, I have. Let's say I have a neighbor down the street. His name is Mr. Smith. He's right." I can go on there. I can get Mr. I don't need anything. I don't even, you know, his address. I don't need a social security number, date of birth. I don't need Correct. anything. Correct. I could go, I could go forge Mr. Smith's name, get a crooked notary, get a crooked witness, take Mr. Smith's property and put it into my name as that crook did a hundred times. Okay. And that's what they make you think. Oh, it's just that simple. But if I turn around and try and sell that property, nobody's going to buy it from me. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I managed to get a piece of paper that says I own it. Does that make it mine? Does that make it sellable? Could I make money off of this deal? No, nobody's going to buy it. Because if somebody was trying to buy this property, they would be doing a survey. Right. They would be doing inspections. They would be doing appraisals. And the and the the owner of it, Mr. Smith, my neighbor, is saying, "Wait a minute, say, wait a minute now. I still own this house. Nobody's nobody's going to. I'm not selling this. Nobody's selling this. And the whole deal would be queered, as you might say. Right. And nothing would come of it. Exactly. So I think that what you're you are saying is to in the infomercial. They, there are some parts that it's, that seems to be that it's not, that it's missing. The, the, the step one, two, three, four is, and it's accurate. We watched it. The accuracy of it is what they are reporting is accurate. What it appears to us is there's some missing components in, in the infomercial, which is what you were just describing. So for example, step one, two, three, can anybody go to the public records? Can anybody look up the properties by address, by name, that information? Yes, it's all public records. And is it accurate that the only thing they can get is your name? They cannot get your social, they cannot get your birth dates, they cannot get other information. Can they do that? Can they go as far as recreating and another deed and forging signatures and doing that? Absolutely, including, as we know, forging a notary. Can all those things be done? Yes, but then it comes down to that you have the piece of paper, and now it comes to what you were just saying, Tom. Yeah. So now, now, so they, they took an audience member, let's mm -hmm. call him Bill Jones, and 
They said, Bill Jones, what city do you live in? Well, now they know what county he lives in. Now they can go to the public records of that county. They can find Bill Jones' mm-hmm. s- signature. They can pull it as they do on the infomercial. They pull it. They, I can print a blank form of a Correct. deed. I can fill it, you know, forge Mr. Bill Jones' signature and, you know, forge a signature and forge a witness and record it in the public records. Now, now I own Bill Jones' property. Correct. Bill Jones, you just got your title stolen. You lost your home. It, it, it's gone. <laughs> No, correct. I, you know, I may have a piece of paper that says I own it, but I can't turn around and do anything with it. Exactly, it's accurate that somebody could do everything that you just said, which and what, that's what they say in the infomercial. But now, where they kind of stop is when it comes to okay, now that that piece of paper is in there and done, now what do they do? And like you said, is that unless it is a vacant residential buildable lot which if there's no one there to see any of this activity that's how it could go to another step yes but if there's a home there and in particular the home you live in your point tom is it's not going to be able to take that next step because there there has to be activity and this activity will be that the owner and the people there will know Exactly. That that's why it's limited to the vacant residential building lot is because no inspectors are going by there, no appraisers are going by there. There might be survey stakes up there, but if you're living on the other side of the city, another county, another state, you don't see those survey stakes. Exactly. Hey folks, my name is Tom Olson. The name of the show is Olson on Law. You're listening to News Radio WFLA. Welcome back everybody. My name is Tom Olson. The name of the show is Olson on Law. Every Saturday between one and two, we just spent the last 45 minutes talking about title theft insurance and why you probably don't need it. We hope you've enjoyed that conversation. And uh, we're going to move on now. I think we've about covered it all. And I would say again, congratulations to my wife and law partner, Chris Merrill, for getting to the bottom of this thing and doing this great job for Miss White and getting her piece of property back and going beyond the just looking at it and saying, oh, there's nothing you can do, Miss White. I'm so sorry, man. You I want to call you, you know, did some investigation on it and came, you know, uncovered this uh, fraud for her. Good for you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And that's what we do. That's what we do. We take a look at something and you do the same thing. I think it's also really important, the fact that, which is what you certainly have taught me, we are always about a solution. Mm Mm-hmm simple solution yeah not because it, interestingly enough if this would have gone to litigation you would have been looking about at least thirty thousand dollars in attorney's fees yeah yep and 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 not necessarily winning your case and without a guarantee mm-hmm. of miss white getting her property back and miss white would not be get, would not be she would have to fork out the money she would not recover that thirty thousand and oh by the way with not a guarantee of even getting it back exactly 